Recently on my blog, I mentioned that for the very first time, you'll be able to see 10 years worth of XBRL data for a large chunk of companies that are filing in this particular reporting season. And I realised I really ought to show you what that looks like, and what better tool to do that with than our good old XBRL to Excel. Also, we've got a new version of the software, so I thought it would be a good way to show you some of its new features. Now we're logged in and ready to go, so we can go straight to our search page. And I'm going to choose Netflix, because I know that it's recently filed its 8th 10K filing. So let's just choose 10Ks in fact. And um, we'll just click on that and it will give us all 8. And you'll see it's recently filed um, in the latest reporting season, 2016. And so we've got 8 filings and therefore potentially 10 years worth of data. And we can select that first and most recent filing up there and then once we've selected a file we have a choice about how we download it now because we can use the old traditional method of going to XBRL to Excel which downloads a spreadsheet full of the data uh, or we can choose a new option new feature here uh, XBRL sheet so what that does is it downloads it again into a spreadsheet but XBRL sheet contains a series of queries that enables you to pull data directly into Excel without having to come back to this website now that's just one filing and what we need is all eight filings if we're going to be able to see 10 years worth of data. Now you can see we've only got five slots here so we could download five and then use XBRL to Excel to download that and then download another five and then merge the two spreadsheets together. Obviously that's all a bit cumbersome. So what we could do is take advantage of XBRL sheet and the fact that we can use queries in there to call back as many filings as we want in order to build our 10 year record from those eight filings. So we'll do that. So we need to load up first with our five filings. So we can do that here. So let's just add the second one and the third one as you can see really straightforward exercise and there we have actually I'm not going to add the fifth one because uh, what I want to do is just to leave a little space for that um, and all will become clear when we move into Excel so once we've got the filings we want we can just click on the XBRL sheet button that's finished downloading your screen will look something like this now it takes between 10 to 20 seconds to prepare each filing so the whole download will take between like 30 seconds to a minute so rather than sitting around drumming our fingers I thought I'd jump straight to this particular page once it's finished so we click on the download sheet here and it will download the sheet I suppose we can click on it and then we can go to Excel to see how it looks there when you open your spreadsheet for the first time, this is what you'll see. You'll come into the first filing, filing one, which was the latest one that we chose to be downloaded. And you'll see that uh, this document was very recently filed in January, a few days ago. And um, yes, you'll also see very helpfully a little message telling you that you don't need to go back to the website. You can download it all from here, which of course is really good news. And also, yeah, when you come in, because there are queries which go out to pick up data off the web, um, you need to click on a couple of buttons. First, you need to enable editing because it's been downloaded, so it cautiously says you can't edit it, which is absolutely fine. And also, as I said, you need to say that you want the external data connections to work. Um, which are the web queries which pull back the data. So yeah, so you've got um, four years worth of data in here already because those are the filings we downloaded and you may remember we deliberately didn't download the fifth filing and the reason for that is because I wanted to show you how quickly it is to bring back that data. In fact, if I just click on uh, the right click button and click refresh for the inbuilt query which is in this file, it immediately goes and runs and gets the data. Now, um, it already knows what to do because when it downloaded this particular spreadsheet it downloaded your token so that you have permission to download data it also downloaded all uh, the uh, companies which are the these are their CI CIK codes here and the requisite years now uh, the spreadsheet is a little bit clever because it can work out uh, probably what you want to do next which is that for filing five you probably want to have the same filer bring down data and you probably want it for the year before that so it's using those default settings which 
of course you can change by overwriting that data in these cells here but it's using those default setters and that settings and that's exactly what we did want to bring back so now if we go to filing 5 we will find that that data has been brought back like I said it's like 10 to 20 seconds uh, to bring this filing data back so uh, no time at all so we now have five years worth of data but uh, the point of this exercise is to show you how to get 10 years worth of data so we'll show you how you can quickly do that by just making a few modifications to this particular example spreadsheet odds that we need to make to this spreadsheet in order to bring down our eight filings we need to add some cells here in order to specify which filings we want we need to add some filing sheets here for the data to come down into and because we want that all to appear in a standard sheet where we can look at the data here we go um, we need to make some uh, slight modifications to that as well so we'll start with the new cells that we need to add very straightforward process all we need to do is add some new columns so yeah if we add them next to these ones so here we go three columns and all we need to do is come across here and uh, pick these up a little copy and paste copy and then paste that in there very nice um, yeah and you should see it's automatically brought across uh, information we want for example it's automatically calculated the years we want um, and also as I said it's quite clever so it knows if there isn't a particular CIK CIK I've done it again uh, specified uh, it doesn't have to be a CIK by the way it could be a ticker um, it will pick it up from uh, the previous filing as you go across the page um, so in fact that is all fine because it will pick those up as it should he just double checks yes I think that will do um, uh, so we can move on to um, the next little thing which is adding the filing sheets so again it's really a very straightforward process we just pick up the last filing which has got stuff in and we just copy that sheet across so if we go uh, yeah press control so that we're making a copy there goes one and there goes another and uh, rather cleverly it, it automatically uh, increments the number so um, you don't even need to change the title so that's all done um, but and as you can see they've got data and that's because it's copied the data from the previous sheet so this data is the wrong data so we need to, to do some refreshes we can do those um, pretty much straight away simply because um, when it copies it across it copies everything including the queries so uh, uh, even the queries are set correctly except they're not quite because unfortunately it copies the original uh, parameters over and um, obviously each filing request needs a s probably a slightly different set of parameters so we do need to change the parameters but it's a good way of actually having a look to see what parameters are specified what things you can change um, with these queries so starting with filing number six if we go to the parameters for filing number six um, and we'll actually go to them so you can see where they're drawing this information from it's picking up the token from there which is where I guess we would expect to find it uh, company ID like I said is picking it up from here uh, using a clever formula so um, that's uh, where it will get it from if um, there's nothing specified here so that's all fine and dandy and and again we we'll just sort of check to see you can see where it's picking this information up from um, so we need to change where it's picking this up from because uh, filing 6 should say something different it doesn't want to pick it up from filing 5 which is what we got here we need to pick it up from the next one so we will set that so that's now set so that will pick up the right year the filing type as you can see a little clever formula so we don't actually need to put four in there because it, there's a, a general four um, if you haven't specified a particular filing four stands for K one stands for Q so um, it will pick up four by default because that's what's set there so that's all fine um, and uh, the type is uh, FSN which stands for financial statements and notes um, yeah we'll talk a bit about, more about that in maybe another one of our videos um, so we need to change that that's correct um, sections and segments again is something which um, we'll have a look at in another video a uh, little powerful new feature that we've added um, but and we really ought to change them because they are set wrong if you go have a look you will see that they'll set for something five so really quite straightforward just to change that to L for segments and we need to do it for sections as well 
and then everything is changed. So uh, that's great, and it just gives you a, a, yeah, an example of uh, all of the different attributes that you can specify for each query. So now that's changed, what we can do for this particular one is we can refresh it. So we can click on refresh, and it will go off and get the uh, extra information for Netflix for uh, what year were we looking at? So this should be pulling back for filing number six. It should be pulling back data for uh, 2011. So if you see down here, you'll see that it's running the query here. So we know it's uh, it's all going on, and uh, and very shortly it will bring back the data. So there we go. Um, so yeah, there we go. Two. 2011. So all the data is down now. We now need to pre prepare our standard sheet. Ooh, where are we over here? Um, which, um, when you open it up, it will just be five years, corresponding with the five findings that are normally there. So we, we need to expand this a bit as well um, in order to get our standardized data up and running. So a uh, very straightforward process. All we need to do is to copy this across for our free missing filing. So uh, just copy those columns and then if I copy that across for six columns, let's make sure we got six. Uh, one, two, yes, yeah, perfect. Um, and uh, press control V. Um, it automatically brings them across. Now um, it's still bringing d showing data for filing five because it's corresponding to what's up the top. So we need to go to that top Cell, blah, 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 blah. and just say no we want to see it for six please and for seven please as well there we go come on the other side seven and also obviously for number eight now that brings us back eight days uh, eight days, eight years worth of data into our standard sheet, but we want ten years. So how do we do that? Well, we need to uh, copy these across for the eighth filing again. So let's just yes, make sure that we have copied them, and then copy them across for the two missing years, year nine and ten. Put them in, and um, again, it's just showing uh, the latest year. But if we set this flag here, so I want to pick up two thousand and eight, as you can see by setting the flag to my one, I don't know, in other words, the previous year, um, it puts, picks up 2008. And not surprisingly, if we set this to minus 2, it will pick up uh, the year 2007. So let's go to our model. So here we have it. 10 years of fresh XBRL data generated from 8 XBRL filings. Now you're going to be able to see this for a lot of companies once this financial reporting season is finished, um, which is, yeah, it's exciting stuff. Now, whilst you weren't looking, I've simplified this model page. Uh, when you come into the spreadsheet for the first time, there's a lot of more data items in here. But I thought just to emphasize um, how you can see these 10 years, I thought I'd pick on revenues. And um, yeah, I've just added the extra columns to uh, to bring that data through from the standard sheet as well. So we can see it all. And um, yes, I've also put in a little handy extra ratio so we can look at the revenue growth and uh, see what a fantastic company Netflix has been with lovely, consistent high revenue growth every year so a very good example to be able to see the benefit of looking back at 10 years worth of data I'm just going to go back to the standard sheet very quickly because I just wanted to just point out why we have uh, these columns here these extra columns while we have two columns for each year in fact I've already widened one here so you can see why it's basically a reference we could uh, put the formula all in one uh, column but um, having the reference means we can quickly go to where the data is. One of the beauties of bringing back the data uh, through the filing, and one of the things that we've deliberately done, is to make sure that uh, the data doesn't just come back um, willy-nilly, but it comes back as it was presented by the company, as you would see it in the uh, 10k HTML. So uh, we, with these references, it means we can quickly jump to where the data has actually come from. So, um, yeah, uh, in other s example sheets we've got, we put some macros in, so um, it's, it's really instantaneous. Um, um, but and in fact, you can go all the way back from the model sheet. 
but uh, um, here we've just got the references as no macros at all um, but still is uh, you know we can use it so for example if we copy it control C and if we go to uh, the jump to thing control G and then paste it in control V and then just press return it will jump to where this data has come from as you can see not surprisingly it's come from the income statement and now you can see the income statement laid out just as it is presented in this particular company Netflix's uh, 10k and so you can see it's very easy to use XBRL sheet to download 10 years worth of data we did it by going to the website first and downloading four years from there and then using XBRL sheet to download the next four years but you can do it all from XBRL sheet and get all eight years and once it's set up it's set up for every company so um, yeah you just need to specify a different CIK or ticker and you'll be able to download and see 10 years of data for any company you so desire